Hello everyone and welcome. Yes, my name is Arrowfire and welcome back to a special episode of All Talk No Shock. Because yes, whilst we're doing the videos pretty rapidly at the moment, there's some news that's come out as expected from TFCon in Toronto. There was a lot of third party reveals, some of which we have been seeing teased before, some were actually there in the flesh. I have got most of these photos, but not all of them. We're gonna go through them like we do sometimes, but I'll also stick a link in the comments below if you wanna go and take a look at them at your own pace, at your own leisure. But let's get on with it. So straight away, we go into Li Zhang Toys. is a company I'm not familiar with and a style I'm not familiar with, and they've got Gorilla, their version of a very stylized Optimus Primal. Now I guess this one is Optimus Primal in that it has a lot of the characteristics to the bot from Beast Wars, the character that we know and mostly love, but it's a very stylized version. You've got no characteristics of the face and whilst it looks very eye-catching and very structured, we have seen this style before with other companies so this is a bit of a familiar market. The Beast Mode, I can't work out if I like it. I think that facial expression, I like the green eyes, but the mouth doesn't really do it for me. It looks almost unfinished in that sense. Maybe these are early proto shots, but given how it's being shown, I would guess this is more or less the final image. I like the stockiness of it, I like the jaggedness on it, and I like the fact it's a company doing something new, but I think we have seen this style before in another company's attempt at it, and I wouldn't say it's my favorite beast mode out there. But hey, new company, new kids on the block. Moving into Legend Scale next, and we're on New Age with their version of Sludge. Now the images we see first and foremost seem to be more of a toy decoration, but this has been teased before, now we're seeing it in its final form. Looks very nice, looks very chromey, very shiny. Uh, the toy mode, or rather the diner mode I should say, has more of the toy accessories to it. You see that kind of Diaclone-esque helmet going on in Dino mode, but also with New Age, as we often get, is the various amount of repaints. We see some unused G2 color schemes here in the red and the blue, which looks nice. A few companies are going in for this now, and I like that they're using unreleased ones of what would have been in G2 that never actually came out in toy form. There's rumors that there was one drawn up for Sludge and for Swoop as well. And you see the various amounts of sludge dinos that we can get here. We get a G2 color, a typical toy deco, a complete G1 tune, as well as a translucent one, which I think New Age have done before. I'm not particularly keen on that one as a deco, but if you like your flavor of sludge, they do like to throw out the repaints very early on during production, you probably got one of your favorite ones here. And keeping it small scale, we're on to Dr. Wu next, who are actually doing quite a few releases at this point in time, and we start off with some scraplets. And I don't know how big these are gonna be, because Dr. Wu figures are generally legend scale, so are these gonna be more in keeping to masterpiece scale, in terms of what they're gonna be relating to, but they're not exactly gonna be big whatever they are, just because Dr. Wu don't work on the big sizes, but we also get a look at their Ultra Magnus coming out in full, battle armor mode, as well as a typical white cab Magnus underneath with blue legs that tells me that the trailer that we see here all comes separate and then forms Ultra Magnus is essentially his upper half. I like the look of the alt mode, the bot mode maybe looks a little bit misproportioned perhaps with it being applied all together as a body armor, but the alt mode looks nice enough. Also, we had a few other releases from Dr. Wu. We saw a bit more of their wheel jack and exhaust variants that are coming out in just really CAD drawings at this point. We also got a release of their upcoming project, which is gonna be their take on Preceptor. And again, looks nice enough. I think there's maybe a tank mode again, maybe if you can call Preceptor having a tank mode. No finished shots just yet, we'll have to see those to come. And next we're moving on to Metagate. Now this is going to be their Ming Zhang G02, which I think is a remake of their Drift mold. This is Bludgeon, who again going very samurai, very highly detailed. Do like it, particularly that head sculpt. The alt mode does catch my eye. I think that is a Bugatti Chiron rather than a Veyron. I do forget which is which, but it looks nice nevertheless. I do love that bot mode. The colors look good, that head sculpt looks lovely. Bludgeon's got a couple of offerings right now. We're gonna have them in the chug line and now we're gonna have it in Metagate as well. Lucky Cat have shown us their square in a box form of 
Constructicons and how they're going to look all side by side. They look pretty stocky, pretty unimaginative on the head sculpts, but I like their bulkiness and you see them all in their vehicle forms. The vehicle forms aren't really the selling point here. Some of them, like Mixmaster in particular, just looks like a big square as much as anything else. And we do see the combined form. The combined form looks pretty good. I do wonder when you look at Scrapper, one of the legs, if it looks a bit of a nightmare to transform and combine, but I like it. And of course, they all fit into boxes, which is a thing nobody asked for. We've seen this released on Transformers The Show this week, and we've got a bit more shots of Moon Studios' version of Primus. We called it Seed, which calls Seed of Life, I suppose. And that's just a nice pose. I like interesting, no real ankle tilt on the right leg as you look at it. Um, but I think this is fairly far in production now if we're going to get this kind of crotch thrusting shots and paint adaptation, which hasn't been painted fully. You can see on some parts of the arms and the hands some bits are missing. But I think it's a good use of the mold and I'm not really surprised that's coming. So yeah, just an updated shot on that one. But also with Moon Studios, we got some work in progress shots of an upcoming Devastator. This could be quite interesting because Moon Studios are more or less Zeta toys. The Zeta combiners, as I have a couple here, are quite good. I think this could be quite something. I'm, it's early in design. I don't think Mixmaster's gonna look like that. I certainly hope not. But that is uh, gonna be a contender for Toy World to be the ultimate masterpiece scale devastator. That could be quite interesting. Now this one I'm very interested in. Planet X have got their IDW Dinobots. They did tease this before and it went quiet for a bit. Okay, I'm quite interested here. So yep, some IDW comic stylized Dinobots. Now, this is Sludge. I like this. I don't think it's the perfect Dino mode so far. This is early in development. When you see it in bot mode, that looks really good. I like that big hunkiness. The fact it's bigger than Grimlock, because Sludge is kind of the strongest one in my opinion. So I think seeing the side by side looks really good. I like how it's proportioned and got that kind of muscular edge to the arms and shoulders. The dino mode, as much as I like it, just looks a little bit basic and doesn't have kind of a curvature to it. it particularly when I'm just thinking the body and the legs just looks very square and two dimensional. Four legs and a somewhat circular body, that's kind of it. I'd want to see maybe a bit more elongation of the neck, maybe, to sound like it's towering over Grimlock. In fact, it's the same height as Grimlock. You know, I'm not a paleontologist or whatever, but that's... They're taller creatures, so I'd want it to tower over Grimlock by the neck. I'd want it to be the bigger of the two so far. But I was really impressed with Planet X Cacus. I'm probably going to be in for this do like it with the sword on the shoulder and that kind of blank expression. Again, giving you the dim-witted but brutishness that Sludge is. Fans toys with some making up to do. Now, actually in attendance, and I don't have the photo, they had their sweep there, their version of Scourge, actually physically there, looking quite nice in a cabinet. But for product shots, we have finally got all five of the aerial bots together. This is with Viper and Jester now, and again, looking very high quality. Now, I will say that I did see something online, and I take this with a pinch of salt, that apparently the lead designer for this set left fan stories halfway through and took the design with them, hence the delay, and they've had to get someone else in and effectively reverse engineer it. I don't know if I buy that personally. I think of that as if someone's left and taken the designs with them, would they not have put it out under a sub company like these knockoff fan toys that we've been seeing? Would someone have done knockoff, got very much a quick buck out of it? I don't know if I'd buy that someone's taken the designs with them. I generally think they've struggled with these designs on combiners. I don't think one person leaving the company could be blamed for however many years, what, three years delayed? I don't get that. But Jester and Viper looking very good. I do think the alt modes look very similar to the Zeta Toys ones in the Zuperion set, which is maybe a little bit average, perhaps, but the bot modes look very, very good. And we do see them combined. And again, with arms out, showing the stability. Now, I've said before, and I'll stay by this until I know otherwise, I think these two figures will have less die cast in them than the other three that have been out so far to support that weight. 
We know there's going to be a frame, but we don't know how the frame is going to be provided to us. If this is going to have to be bought as a separate piece. A lot of people have said they're going to keep these ones in individual bot modes. I may do as well, even if it does combine and looks very nice. It would just be nice to see this set done. And keeping on fan toys and set done, we're not done with combiners. Here is Bandit. Here is their version of the finished set of Dead End and therefore the Stunticons. Now, he looks very nice and you get all five of them together and they all look good side by side. But what is quite interesting is we get another shot of Motormaster, FT-31 Marauder with a double trailer. Now, I really don't know what to make of this. This is gonna be a base mode, which the additional trailer, the second trailer, is going to make up the shell, presumably, that all of the limbs hang off of. My only thinking is here, is this going to be a separate piece? Is this going to be a sixth member you have to buy? Are you buying another Rogue King? Another Motor Master? Will there be two Motor Masters in people's collection just to give the option to combine? Or are you just buying a second trailer? I don't get it. I've, I've, and this is where I thought fans toys were playing a very risky game with combiners. You might get all five figures, but if you want to combine and get a true masterpiece Metasaur, and there's options to flip to give a bit more of a tune accurate or a comic accurate or IDW accurate version, I think this is a risky game. I felt it's risky and I still do. The fact that this is how they're gonna do it. Now, I don't mind a company using parts forming to do it, but this has been a change very late in production with figures already released, kind of sold on a lie for lack of a term. And I wonder, this is a bit like what X-Transbots did. I think it was X-Transbot that made you buy the second trailer that cost quite a bit and came with all of the accessories. If you wanted to get the combined form, you had to buy a sixth member. I don't think that's great. I really don't. I think if you need to do it, set your stall out early saying, this is gonna need a shell. This is gonna need parts forming. And at least then people will know if they don't want that or do want that, whether they're into this set or not. But anyway, we're seeing a bit more of Menasaur. Here he is alongside Sovereign, looking very nice, very MP scaled, and with a different choice ahead. So they are gonna finish these combiner sets. Will they do more combiners beyond this? Honestly, I don't think so. I think whenever these are finished, I think fan stories are gonna give a break from combiners because they haven't got that art nailed down yet. But someone who has got an art of combiners nailed down is MMC or Ocular Max. Now, we got a few shots of blades and groove, so their figures are coming along, but we've seen needs before. There was also a prototype shot of Hotspot actually there. But what I do have here to show you is a bit more of a clearer image for how Defensor is gonna look when all is said and done. Now again, this is all in one, but I do like how this is shaping up. Now, whether I will keep them all in this mode or whether I'll display them in their individual forms, I don't know. But I like this, I like the stockiness. I do think the slenderness of the legs and thighs maybe bothers me a bit, but I like the square chest and I like the upper arms of first aid and blades. I think it looks quite good. Head sculpt maybe he doesn't need to look quite so sad, but hey, MMC do do very good bots, most averages. I think they have some of the better successes out there. So I'm inclined to see how this one goes. But also to that, we are seeing what we knew they were gonna do next. They're gonna turn their attentions to the Constructicons and Devastator. And we got a very simple yet effective G1 looking Mixmaster and then a blurred out shot of how Devastator is going to look side by side. Now that's going to be quite an interesting one and maybe an easier choice for them because there's six members and again their gimmick is all in one. So you've got more chance of using combined bits to keep these combiners more or less at the same height with Bruticus and Defensor, how Devastator is going to scale with a six member but more or less at the same height. I think they have their path laid out. They know what they want to do and they're just continue to make good bots, so I am quite keen to see how this set and other combiner sets go under MMC. And we finish off with Fans Hobby, who have been busy. Now we see final colour shots, or at the very least digitally coloured shots of their Armada Jetfire, and, or Unicron Trilogy Jetfire anyway, 
it looks fine. I do like the shuttle mode. And I think as I have this on pre-order, I would keep this in shuttle mode. I like that bulkiness to it. It's just really over accentuated and this is what fans probably do. They do big bots. They like the bigness, the heftness. Look at the legs, look at the gun, look at the big wings. It's very over the top. And it's very much what the character needs to be when you combine it with their Navy commander, with their fully souped up Armored or Optimus Prime, it's gonna scale very nicely, very tall. Um, but I do like how that looks. So yeah, image with digital coloring and effects. So this hasn't been put into a prototype painted shot yet, but they're progressing with this quite nicely. And when we have another shot with the upcoming overload figure for super combined mode, I mean, God knows how much that's gonna weigh. I hope the ankles can take the weight. We also see what else they're doing, which is a, I shouldn't really be surprised they're doing this, but it's not really their typical style. They're bringing out the Star Saber in three individual bots that can be wielded by an Optimus or a Megatron, which if you're into this set and you're into your Unicron trilogy, particularly Armada, this probably is a purchase for you. And then what I was very pleased to see, some much clearer shots now, we have got their fairly finished version, if you like, of Tidal Wave. Now, that is looking a lot more defined, a lot more detail. We haven't seen coloured shots, but look at the size of it. How that's towering above a very big Armada Megatron and Meg Tyranno. I do wonder, maybe it's a bit slender, perhaps? Maybe, but I think in flesh that's going to look really nice. I do like how towering it is, but particularly when you've got the three individual modes and how we have seen it in its combined aircraft carrier mode, this is a bot that's meant to be big. And this is gonna be big, which again, combines with Meg Tyranno in at least two forms. So we have super combined mode A, where you've got these ginormous fists and wings and jetpacks, but also then he can have massive stilts on his feet and some wings on the back as well for combined mode B. It's very much take apart and do what you like, but this is what fans hobby do. They do big, yet not complicated. Something that you get playability out of. I really do like their designs. I like the fact they're making great guns with this. The fact that they're sticking to the Unicron trilogy and just having a great time with it. Really because no one else is having a go at it other than the old Hasbro release. And at least someone is tackling Tidal Wave. So this is on my pre-order list. I'm very looking forward to getting it. The more images I see of it, the more I like it. And there we go. That's all I've got to show you. But again, there are more images. I will stick this up with the link in the description below. If anyone wants to have a look at these images, they can. But there's a lot to feast on. Some interesting, some encouraging, some a bit more worrying in the case of fan stories, perhaps. But hey, it's better to see something and something to get excited about for the future and things to come. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and hit that subscribe button because I will see you on the next one.